Good afternoon. Um, my name is Heather McWilliams. I work for the Birmingham Public Library and today we are presenting a program called Get to Know Your Superheroes. Today we'll be talking about Superman. We have Hugh Hardy from the Powderly Library. We have Erica White from the Smithfield Library. We have Leslie Deason from Avondale Library and we have Maya Jones from West End Library. So our first presenter is going to be Hugh Hardy and I will go ahead and share my screen um, and we will get started with the presentation. Thank you, Heather. My portion of it is the creation and history of Superman. Superman was originally created by Jared Siegel, a writer, and Joe Schuster, an artist. Superman was created and published on April 18, 1938. It first appeared in the book Action Comics No. 1. Mr. Uh, Mr. Siegel and Mr. Schuster were both from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Siegel and Schuster first created Superman as a villain, if you can believe that or not. But not long after creating him, the two decided to convert Superman into the hero that he is today. Joanne Siegel, this is Jerry Siegel's wife, was the model for the original Lois Lane. Siegel took his father's death very hard, and this was about the time that he created Superman. His father died of a heart attack during the midst of a robbery, thus leaving him with the image of a man saving a man who was at gunpoint. Siegel and Schuster used a lot of simple things and imagination for the inspiration, such as Siegel standing with his hands on his hips as the way Superman does. Superman came out against some very established competition when he was first created, such as Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. They were both, both eventually were picked up by Detective uh, Comics, later to be known as just plain old DC. Siegel and Schuster made the biggest mistake of their young lives by selling the rights to Superman for a mere $130. Siegel and Schuster soon realized that they had been taken advantage of as they saw their magazine flying off the shelves. The two didn't have a legal leg stand on because they sold the rights. The world needed a hero and even a fifth, uh, fictional one could temporarily ease the stress as they were going through a war at the time that Superman was created. There are eight key points to remember about Superman, and they are as follows. Superman was first envisioned as a villain. Siegel and Schuster sold the rights to Superman for a mere $130. Superman preceded Batman by only a few months in his creation. And of course, Batman went on to be a huge figure as well. The US government during World War II censored Superman they could not mention anything about atomic bombs nor the Manhattan Project. It seems kind of strange for something that was a fictional character, but the US government decided to intervene. Now, this is an interesting fact. Most of Superman's love interests all carry the same exact initial. Lois Lane, Lana Lane, Lori Lamars, and so on. Very interesting fact. Actors that played Superman were also misfortunate in their real lives. Some went, some died, some went through hardships financially. It just seems like playing the role of Superman was not the best, best job to have. An Illinois town embraced Superman to bring tourists. The actual town was named Metropolis, Illinois. The town even built a statue of Superman to put out front to draw interest. One comic strip gave Superman something that he had never had before, was a mullet haircut. Can you imagine Superman with a mullet haircut? This doesn't seem quite right. And the one big fact was Superman was taken in by John and Martha Kent after his spacecraft landed in an open field near their farm. The early years of action um, comics, later to be named Detective Comics, in 1960, was being sued by the two originators of Superman, Siegel and Schuster, because they wanted more money for, from the company for once they saw how much it was making from their idea. The two were being paid $75,000 per year each. The two filed a lawsuit in 1964, when now DC fired both Siegel and Schuster 
and the lawsuit lingered on until 1967. Two finally accepted a $200,000 payoff and signed away any future claims to Superman and any other characters. Both Siegel and Schuster both financially fell to the pauper like status. Warner Communications, which now owned the rights to Superman, gave both of gentlemen lifetime pensions of $35,000 per year and credited them for being the actual creators of Superman. A few brief notes in regards to Superman's true identity. His own planet was Krypton. Father's name, his real father, was Joel. His mother's name, again, Ao, was Laura. Superman's real name was Tal L, and the spaceship landed in a small field near Smallville. And that is the history and creation of Superman. Okay, um, I would like to talk about Superman in film. Um, he's the classic Golden Age superhero. Superheroes have always been popular in America. And it's Superman that is one of the most beloved and recognized comic characters in history. Next slide. Superman has thrilled uh, audiences on the big screen for many years. And the fiction character Superman has appeared in film since its inception. Uh, I'd like to talk about the early appearances in the first Man of Steel. Uh, Superman's first on-screen appearance was in an animated short film called Superman. It was also known as the Mad Scientist, and this was in 1941. Uh, in this particular film, uh, Superman gained the power of flight um, in earlier uh, uh, at earlier times, Superman uh, just left over child buildings, and this was uh, finally seen as um, a kind of comical, and uh, they uh, gave, finally gave Superman the power of flight. Now, because this was an animated film, the emphasis was more on action and motion, and I'll contrast that uh, with the next slide, but um, Kirk Allen, uh, was the 19, in the 1948 movie serial Superman. So this was a, ser a series. And then the 1950 sequel, Adam Man versus Superman. He was the star. So this became the most popular movie serial of all time. And Kirk Allen was then known as Hollywood's first Man of Steel. And you can see um, the picture there in the background of uh, Kirk Allen. Next slide. Adventures of Superman. Now this was the long running live action TV series. Um, it was so popular between uh, the time period of 1952 to 1958. It was the most popular portrayal of Superman during this period. George Reeves was the star, and as you can see, that's the picture of him in the background. It was, and in contrast to the previous slide with the animated um, film, this was more of a character-driven drama, and it emphasized Superman's career at the Daily Planet, and it, uh, kind of his life as Clark Kent. Um, so that, that was the emphasis uh, uh, in that series. Next slide, please. You will believe a man can fly. This was the, probably one of the most memorable taglines in history um, on the, uh, all of the, the movie posters. You saw this tagline. Richard Donner directed this first Superman film. Superman, the first Superman film was in 1978. Superman II, 1980. And they were filmed simultaneously. So both at the same time, Christopher Reeve was the star. And uh, there's uh, his picture, of course, in the background. Uh, one interesting point about these uh, Superman films was that it gave a uh, negative dystopic portrayal of a Kryptonian civilization. Uh, high production budget, strong performance, exciting action. These were the most memorable and favorite Superman films. Um, 
Man of Steel fights to save the world in his true love from Lex Luthor. Richard Lester was commissioned as the director to finish Superman 2. Next slide. Superman 3. Now things are, are uh, you know, things are a little less successful in this movie. Um, the pop, as far as popularity is concerned, Christopher Reeve was still the star. This was a 1983 movie. Uh, Richard Lester did return to direct, but it was the only Christopher Reeve uh, uh, Superman film to not fe feature Lex Luthor. There was also very limited Lois Lane appearance. This was more of an emphasis on humor over adventure. Richard Pryor was one of the stars and um, it was the Man of Steel takes on maniacal businessman who uses a computer hacker to save the world. So it had took more of a humorous approach. It was a little less successful financially and critically. Again, the emphasis was more on humor. Richard Pryor was there. So, you know, it, was, it wasn't quite successful. Some people liked it, but it was a little less successful. Um, so next slide, please. Superman 4 now is the quest for peace. Um, Christopher Reeve is still the star. It's a 1987 movie. Now, the, the, uh, the, one of the, the points about this movie was it had very poor cinematography. Um, they talked about um, poor flying sequences, things like that. The camera was just um, uh, 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 took, uh, you know, the, the uh, a flying sequence was, were just very poor. Uh, Christopher Reeve was still the star in the 1987 movie. It was a, mostly about Superman's Chris, uh, crusade for nuclear disarmament and his battle with a evil clone uh, called Nuclear Man. Uh, Gene Hackman played Lex Luthor and Margot Kidder was Lewis, Le Lois Lane, uh, but it was a greatly reduced budget. It was kind of a financial disappointment. So things aren't going well for Superman right now. Next slide, please. Superman Returns. Now we have um, Brandon Ruth as star as Superman. Uh, and Brian Singer is the director. Uh, so we have a, a new director now who has stepped in. After a five-year absence, we have Superman returning to Earth, and he has to prove his importance to the world. It was more of a homage to the classic series. We're going back to classic uh, now. And uh, Kevin Sp uh, Spacey stars Lex Luthor. You have uh, Brandon Ruth there in the background, uh, but th this was kind of a return to the classic series. It wasn't quite successful financially, but um, uh, that, that's, uh, that's how, how things are with the Superman Returns. Next slide, please. Now we have uh, Henry Cavill to step in, who starred in the 2013 movie, this is a re was considered, and, and there you see his picture there in the background, with the different um, costume. This was a reboot of the a Superman film series. We have a redesigned costume. It has darker, moodier tones. You can tell there in the picture that that's more of a muted uh, blue and red. Um, they, there's no red trunks also on the outside of the costume. It was more of a high-tech mesh material. You can see a little bit there in the picture, but um, in uh, some other pictures, you can tell that that's more of a, of a mesh type material. Um, and uh, in this particular film, Superman uses his powers to intervene in a West African crisis. It was an origin film. Uh, that's what they refer to this is he goes back and learns about where he came from. Next slide, please. Batman versus Superman, the dawn of justice. So now we have a 2016 uh, American superhero film. This was uh, a little piece of trivia was that the first, this was the first live action film to feature Batman and Superman together and also was the first live action portrayal of Wonder Woman, cinema, uh, cinematic portrayal of Wonder Woman. We have Ben Affleck there uh, for you there in the background, who's cast as Superman, 
and Henry Cavill there, who's cast as uh, Henry Cavill, who's cast as Superman. Ben Affleck as Batman. Lex Luthor has manipulated Batman into a battle with Superman. So that's kind of the the overall plot line there. It had some unfavorable reviews. Uh, some people didn't like uh, its tone, its screenplay pacing. One interesting point was that for some, it was considered an allegory about contemporary American politics. Democrats versus Republicans. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, Batman, blue, Democrats, Superman, you know, the, with the red uh, outfit and things was uh, the Republicans. That was all, um, you know, just some critics' reviews, what, what some people believe uh, that it was kind of about. Next slide, please. Justice League, 2017 American superhero movie. Superman's, and you can see the, 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 uh, all of the, the heroes there, the superheroes there in the background, the slide. Superman, however, spent most of the movie dead. He does take part in the final bat battle. So um, this was more about introducing new characters rather than the Superman development. You can see all the superheroes there. Those were all introduced in the film. It was more about that than the Superman development. We don't learn that much more about Superman. We uh, learn all of these uh, new uh, members of the Justice League. This is a team of metahumans who formed the Justice League and saved the world from destruction. So uh, there you are, all the, the one uh, characters there in the background. Next slide, please. Feature of Superman. So, Henry Cavill there is uh, still the um, uh, play, uh, plays the part of Superman, but his future uh, for Superman is unclear. No new movies have been scheduled. No announcements of uh, in the scripting stage by Warner Brothers, and the character for the movie may be on hiatus. Uh, but uh, so we're we're kind of unclear where we're uh, at now with Superman. There may you know as far as comics and, and things are concerned, that's open. But filming, we just don't know right now. So that's my uh, my presentation, my portion of the presentation. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. I'm Erica, and I'm doing Superman in animation and live action television. Now, as Leslie previously mentioned, our first portrayal of Superman overall was animated. It was the uh, uh, Superman serial, uh, cartoon serial from the 1940s produced by uh, uh, I'm so sorry, I just had to yawn. <laughs> uh, the first Superman movie appearance was uh, the 1940 serial Superman, later known as the Mad Scientist. And one uh, important tidbit we should have liked to know is that it was one of the nominees for the 1941 Short Animation Academy Award and produced by Flash Studios. Now, one of the things that this show this uh, series, series, like the next series I'm about to discuss, use the voice talents of Bud Collier and Joan Allen from the uh, Adventures of Superman tele uh, move, uh, radio serial. Ooh, I'm sorry. And the, new, the New Adventures of Superman was a cartoon that was produced by Filmation and Film in 1966. This was Superman's first animated appearance in more than 20 years. And after that series, it was be um, uh, several years before it was he was seen again. And that would be in the uh, form of the Hanna-Barbera produced Super Friends series. This show featured the Justice League characters and a variety of kid-friendly adventures. The series aired on ABC and was initially canceled but was later revived and went on to run for a total of nine seasons over 12 years. 
and after uh, Super Friends ended, it was a, a bit of a space between the next series, but it, the next one came in 1988, which was the short-lived Superman series, which was produced to coincide with the 50th anniversary of the first appearance of Superman. This was the first uh, animated feature to showcase uh, Superman's post-crisis continuity it was uh superman and clark kent having equal measures and lex luther being depicted as the quintessential corrupt 1980s businessman this series is only ran for 13 episodes but is known colloquially in the fandom as the ruby spears ruby spears superman and is pretty well liked by the Superman fandom. Now, after that, we have Superman, the animated series, which ran on Kids WB and uh, ran for uh, three seasons. This show featured a number of well-known actors and key and supporting roles, including Tim Daly as Superman Clark Kent, Dana Delaney as Lois Lane. The series' main villain was portrayed by Clancy Bram, and this was a part of the shared DCAU or uh, along with Batman the Animated Series. Okay, the next appearance of Superman came in the Justice League series. Now, Justice League was a continuation of the Superman series and had to deal with the fallout from that series is series finale in which Superman was brainwashed by Dark Side. All right. After Justice League came Ju Justice League Unlimited. This series was in many ways similar to Justice League but featured a much expanded cast and more comic book inspired adventures. Um, and 2006, Warner Brothers wanted to produce a new Superman series to coincide with the release of Superman Returns in 2006. This series came to be known as the Legion of Superheroes. This, future, this series featured a younger Superman with fighting adventures in the future along with DC's team of, of teenage futuristic heroes. Superman continues to appear in a larger team and the Justice League action series. It ran for a single 52 episode season. And Superman has been a character who has appeared in many uh, DC animated series, including Crypto the Superdog, Young Justice, The Batman, DC Superhero Girls, and Harley Quinn. Starting in 2007 with Superman Doomsday, Warner Brothers began releasing a series of animated films featuring DC Comics characters. The films were released direct to video model. So some of the movies had a loose uh, internal continuity, though many were standalone. Superman Doomsday was a loose adaptation of the death of Superman's Superman story arc from the 1990s. They would later revisit this in a more fateful adaption with the death of Superman and reign of the Superman. In total, there have been 38 DC Universe animated movies. Standout films featuring Superman include Superman Unbound, All-Star Superman, and Superman vs. Still Elite. Next slide. I forgot all that. And we're on to Superman in live action now. Now, as Leslie mentioned, Superman first appeared on television in 1952 with The Adventures of Superman. The show ran for a total of 104 episodes over six seasons. Uh, George Reeves, an actor who was most famous for his death, <laughs> uh, rather than his portrayal of the Man of Steel, Phyllis Coates starred as Lois Lane during the first season, but was later replaced by Noel Neal, who is more re known to the fandom in that role. Jack Larson and John Hampton starred as Jimmy Olsen and Perry White, respectively. The next series that 
this featured Clark Kent was actually called Superboy and featured the teen, the uh, college adventures of Superman at Schuster University, or Superboy rather. The show pre premiered in 1988 and ran for a total of 100 half-hour episodes over four seasons in syndication. Superboy was portrayed by John Haynes Newton during the season one, but was later replaced by Gerard Christopher in later seasons. Uh, next slide. All right, in 1993, our next Superman appeared. This series was uh, created by Deborah Joy Levine and appealed to a largely female audience and was called Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. And it ran on ABC for a total of four seasons. Dean Kane played Superman, Clark Kent, and Terry Hatcher played Lois Lane. This series focused more on Clark Kent's side of the character with the, his relationship with Lois and Clark being the prominent story over the course of the season. All right, next slide. All right, and now we come to our longest running and so far last premiering Superman series. Smallville is the longest running Superman series despite taking place before Clark Kent ever since the mantle of the Man of Steel. The series ran on the WB and CW from 2001 until 2011. The show is a coming of age story set in Clark Kent's hometown of Smallville, Kansas. The early seasons of the show concentrated on, on Clark's relationships with both Lex Luthor and Lana Lane. Later seasons focused on his burgeoning crime fighting career, started the Daily Planet, and his relationship with Lois Lane. Tom Welling played Clark Kent, and Le Lois Lane was played by Erica Durant. All right. Superman has also gone on to appear in the CW's Arrowverse series of television shows, Supergirl, The Arrow, Flash, etc. And it's slated to appear in a new spinoff, Superman and Lois, in 2021. The show was originally supposed to premiere in the fall of 2020, but, but was delayed to, due to COVID-19 pandemic. All right, everyone, and that's all for me. All right, now we're going to talk about Superman in comics and graphic novels. And the graphic novels spotlighted Ugh. here are our new future publications and some of the most popular storylines in the last 10 years. Next. So, first up, we have Batman Superman Volume 1 Who Are the Secret Six by Joshua Williamson. This will be published in November of 2020. A virus is spreading, and it's not just after innocent people, but some of our most powerful heroes as well. The biggest question isn't why or how, but who. The Batman Who Laughs, one of the premier villains in the DC universe, is crawling his way from the depths of the dark multiverse and wreaking havoc on the DC universe. Now he has been infecting some of the biggest superheroes across the DC universe with a mutated version of the Joker virus that is coursing through him. Cue the team up of two of the greatest superheroes in history, Batman and Superman. They decide to work together to find out who is infected and hopefully cure them before it's too late. Next. Batman Superman Volume 2. World's Deadliest, also by Joshua Williamson. It'll be published in April, 2021. After taking on the Batman Who Laughs and his group of six infected DC heroes, things don't get any easier for the Dark Knight and the Man of Steel in volume two of Batman Superman. First, writer Joshua Williamson teams with artist Nick Darrington for candor compromise as General Zod returns to Earth and targets Ra's al Ghul. General Zod is on a mission to resurrect the bottle city of Kandor and he's ready to obliterate anyone in his path, leading Ra's al Ghul to attempt to save his Lazarus pits from Kryptonian chaos with Batman and Superman caught in the middle. Next. 
Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Trinity by Matt Wagner, 2016. This graphic novel establishes the first meeting between the world's finest trinity, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. When Batman's greatest nemesis, Raz al Ghul, recruits Bizarro and the Amazon warrior Artemis to aid him in his plan to create global chaos, the Dark Knight detective suddenly finds himself working with the Man of Steel and the Amazon princess. Looking to thwart the madman's plot to simultaneously destroy all satellite communications, as well as all of the world's oil reserves, Earth's greatest heroes reluctantly band together. But if Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are to have any hope of stopping Ra's nuclear missile assault, they will first need to overcome their own biases and reconcile their differing philosophies. Next, Superman, Secret Identity by Kirk Busiek, 2013. An alternate universe take on the traditional Superman story. The story describes the life of Clark Kent, a man in a world in which superheroes exist only as characters in comics, who suddenly gains the powers of Superman and embarks on a superheroic career but keeps his existence secret from the world at large. Next. Superman Birthright, The Origin of the Man of Steel by Mark Wade, 2013. Hueytown, Alabama native Mark Wade takes on a modern day revamping of the traditional Superman origin story. Tasked with the job of making Superman's origin story closer to the one seen in the TV series Smallville, Wade creates an engaging Superman story, which includes a vegetarian Clark Kent and returns an old superpower called Superman Soul Vision. Next. Superman Red Sun by Mark Miller. 2012. Superman origin story created by Mark Miller with the premise, what if Superman had been raised in the Soviet Union? This series spans approximately 1953 to 2001. Next. Kingdom Come by Mark Wade, 2011. Set in a future that deals with a growing conflict between the visibly out of touch traditional superheroes and a growing population of largely amoral and dangerously irresponsible new vigilantes. In many cases, the offspring of the traditional heroes. Between these two groups is Batman and his assembled team who attempt to contain the escalating disaster foil the machinations of Lex Luthor and prevent a world ending superhuman war. Next. Last we have Superman, Earth One by J. Michael Straczynski. And the series was published between 2011 and 2015. Superman, what would happen if the origin of the man of tomorrow were introduced today for the very first time. Return to Smallville and experience the journey of Earth's favorite adopted son as he grows from boy to Superman like you've never seen before. 